I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will explore the sine and cosine waves which are periodic functions. Generally we call them sinusoidal functions. So let us see what is a sine wave and what is a cosine wave. So let me sketch both the waves here. So both are periodic in nature. When we talk about sine function basically we have a sinusoidal function which starts from zero, goes up, comes down and then it repeats like this, right? So that is a sinusoidal function. On the other hand, if we are talking about a cosine function, in that case, the wave starts with the maximum point, right? So, so in that case, the wave is starting at the maximum, it goes down, goes to the minimum, and then on the top, and then repeats, right? So, so that is cosine function, right? So in general, we can write these functions as let us say sine x and cos x. Now they have uh, so many things in common that in general we term these functions as sinusoidal functions. Now even before getting into details, uh, let me show you how from one wave we can get the other one. So if I move the sine wave left uh, by quarter of the cycle, in this case, uh, let me get into details and then we'll get to that point. So, so let us look into sine function and cosine function in further details. In sine function, one period is 360 degrees or 2 pi. So starting with 0, one wave or one cycle takes 2 pi radians or in degrees it will be 360 degrees. So after every 360 degree the same cycle repeats and therefore it is a periodic function. What you will notice here is that the center value will be at half of the time period, time period is 360, so half will be 180 in degrees and pi in radians and the first peak appears at pi by 2 or 90 degrees. So I am putting both the scales side by side. The minimum value appears at 1 pi by 2, 2 pi by 2, 3 pi by 2. So that is how we get it in radians, 3 pi by 2. And in degrees, it is 270. Let me write 270 degrees here. So to sketch a sinusoidal function, what I find is that there are five critical points. So these five critical points are at 0, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 2 pi. So these are my five critical points. So whenever you sketch a sine function, you have to show at least these five points. If the question is to graph, then we will show more points. Better will be at 30, 60, 90 in the interval of 30s, I should say, right? So that is what you should be calculating. Plot those points to make a graph. So let us call these two terms one is sketch and the other term is graph. If the question says graph in that case you should find the value of the function at for sine x we're talking first 0 30 degrees 60 degrees 90 degrees keep on adding 30 right 120 degrees 180 degrees 210 degrees 240 like this right up to 360 degrees, right? But if we are talking about sketching a sine function, you would actually calculate the points for 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. So these five points are critical. I will call them key points, right? But these give you more accuracy to sketch the graph. So in my graph, whenever I say sketch, I will be only dealing with these five points. And most of the time I make rough sketches. So I'll concentrate on these five points. 
I hope that is clear. Okay, now let's move forward with a basic sine function and see how can we get cosine function from the sine function. Well, if I move the sine function towards left, let us say, by 90 degrees, then this point comes here at x equals to 0. So that is the position for cos x. Do you see that? So in general, we can say cos x could be written as equal to sin x. When I move this, I mean, I should have not written like this. Let me write here. Uh, cos x, I could write as equals to sin of. I'm moving 90 degrees to left. That means it is plus 90, right? So it is x plus 90 degrees, right? That is how. In case you are working in radians, you could write this as sine of x plus pi by 2, right? So some students are working in radians, some students will be dealing with degrees, right? In any case. So as you can see, cos is, so we see what? We see that cosine is transformed sine function, right? Therefore, we just have one name sinusoidal and by default it means sine function, right? So cosine graph or equation can be derived from the sine equation or graph by translating it quarter of a cycle to the left. Let me say that, okay? So now let's look into the cosine function. So we see that it starts with the maximum value and uh, for both sine and cosine the maximum value is 1 and the minimum value is minus 1. The time period is 2 pi if you are doing in radius and of course 360 degrees in degrees, correct? Now half it is at pi or 180 degrees. At 90 degrees or I should write pi by 2 on top or at 90 degrees we have 0 for cosine. The other 0 is at 3 pi by 2, right, or 270 degrees, or 270 degrees, okay. And the maximum value is 1, was it at 0, and at 2 pi or 360 degrees. So that is how the cosine function is. In general, if I have to sketch a cosine function, I will consider these five points, right. So let me write down the key points which we are always going to consider for sine and cosine function, right? So these are very important points which we should always be considering whenever sketching the graphs of sine and cosine. So let us say the value of x, we are always considering 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees and 360 degrees, correct? When it is sine of x, in that case, it is 0, 1, 0, minus 1. So I write 0, 1, 0, minus 1, and then back to 0. Do you see that? As far as cosine of x is concerned, it starts with maximum. So the value of the function is 1, 0, then minus 1, 0, and then again 1. And this pattern repeats after a time period of 360 degrees or 2 pi. So that is the cycle. So this is one full cycle which I have shown and time period here is is equals to 360 degrees or you could say 2 pi radians. Radians is a ratio as you know so we normally do not write radians, right? But with this you understand very clearly what is a sine function, what is a cosine function and how do we find its period right and how are they related now in general when we move forward and do some more examples we may have situations where the time period amplitude and things may change right but what you should remember is that if we have a sine function let me sketch one sine function now and even if its time period or amplitude changes the basic characteristics remain same so the basic characteristic is then let us say the time period is t, then we can have five points and these five points are at zero. This point is quarter of t, right, t over four. This is half of t 
and this is three fourth. Do you understand? And that is the time period. So these are the five points which we will always consider. So you could at times figure out that if it is a sine function, then the maximum will be at quarter of time period, minimum will be at three fourth of the time period, and the zeros will be at zero, half of time period and each time period interval, right? So that is how the sine function repeats in general. Now as move as we move forward, we will see or we will sketch different sine functions with different time periods and amplitude. Go through this video once again, try to understand what these functions are so that we could further explore and extend our knowledge about these functions. Thank you and all the best.